our life. Thank you for the hope of life that we find in you. Thank you that you alone give us purpose and meaning and glory to our lives. Thank you that it is a reflected glory, the hope of eternity with you. Thank you that that hope begins now. We live it out now in your name for your renown. It is your glory, the, 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 the resurrected majesty of Christ that is reflected in us as we live with this hope. Clothe us with forgiveness, redemption from the soul out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We look to you. We reflect on your power, your truth, your glory, your goodness. Thank you that you are the hope of our lives. Forgive us as we forgive others that have trespassed against us. Today we let go of bitterness. We let go of malice, of unforgiveness. We let go of the pain. We release the guilt and the shame that we feel for our own actions. And we receive the new life in Christ. Apply to us the fullness and the finished work of the redemption of Jesus Christ for us. We receive that free gift of hope and life we receive it with thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Christmas month. As we've heard, as we've heard today, we are starting our Advent series leading up to Christmas. Advent is simply the build up to, the anticipation of a big event, or the arrival of someone important. Is not God coming into the world the biggest event ever? The other day, some of us were talking about Christmas as it seems to us in other countries, where you would think that maybe the busiest day is the day before Christmas. But actually, often it's the day after. As people rush to the shops to exchange what they've been given for something they really want. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? But I think Christmas is about exchange. Now, how many of you are truly, really, very excited that it's Christmas again? Already. Oh, thank you. We have three. It's been one tough year, hasn't it? And for some, it may have been the roughest year yet. It's a tough life. There are so many reasons to just not get excited about Christmas this year. But I would guess if you spent the time, you would find many, many reasons to thank God for this past year and to celebrate this, His special time of the year. He has seen you through and He will see you through. You know, people have been worrying about the future of Zimbabwe for maybe 40 years now. Worry that hasn't changed a thing. When I look out this morning, I see the future of Zimbabwe. You are the future of Zimbabwe, no matter how young or how old. You are God's future in this land. There's one, biggest reason of all, to make every effort this year and every year, and that is Jesus, the Son of God, born to us. This is the time we celebrate one of the greatest events of all time. That which the world had been waiting for and anticipating for thousands of years, the one who would come to rescue us, to save us, to redeem us, to deliver us, to restore us, to forgive us. The Messiah, our Messiah, your Messiah, your Messiah, given to you. This Christmas is all about hope. We were promised that he would come, and that was the hope that God's people held on to. And he came. And he has promised he will come again. And so we have hope for every today and for the future and for eternity. 
God never promised us a better life. He promised us a better hope. But because of that hope, this life is better. Because our hope is a person, Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God who would walk with us every step of this hard life. Last week we were reminded that hope and faith in God is hard. Life is hard. What we need is a change of heart by changing how we see our circumstances, how we see what we are going through, how we see what life actually really is all about. When we see that God will use the hard and the difficult to strengthen us and grow our hope and faith, we can then face each trial with determination, not defeat, knowing we are in training to get spiritually fit, to live a disciplined life, because there is a much, much bigger picture. There is so much more to come. When we grow in hope and faith, we learn to trust God and to trust Him to do things His way, the right way, the only way. Our faith is an act of hope. We get to participate and God works in us and through us for our good. But we have to trust Him. That's what went wrong in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve did not trust God. They did not believe Him at His word. They rather trusted in themselves to serve their own ends, their own way. And disaster. Sin corrupts all of creation. And man did not stand a chance. The consequence to sin is death. But... God had a plan. He had always had a plan. He knew we needed to be healed of sin and so he came to earth to defeat sin on our behalf. And it was his pure joy to do just that. To save that which he loves the most. He came because he loves you. He had promised he would save us. He promised he would find a way to forgive us at his own expense. Christ is the hope of forgiveness. Christmas is the hope of forgiveness. Do not live in the guilt and shame of your sin and failings and weaknesses. Live in the hope of God's forgiveness. You are forgiven. You are free, but you have to choose this freedom. And that is so easy. It's as easy as choosing Jesus. As much as we maybe look forward to Christmas, God looked forward to that first Christmas with God-sized anticipation and joy and excitement because he was coming for you. He came to give himself for you and for me. And so Christmas is a time of giving. What are you going to give this Christmas? Peter the Apostle talks about facing difficult times and all kinds of trials. And he says, these have come so that our faith, your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. We live in a fallen world. That is not God's fault. That is the result of sin. Are we not all sinful? A fallen world is a hard world to live in because of the selfishness and greed of man. But it is here that our hearts are tested. Trials are the process God now uses to prepare us, 
to prepare us to meet Jesus, to prepare us for whatever eternity holds. Life is a refining process that is never going to be easy. But trials help us to learn to keep our eyes not on what is seen, but on what we hope for, that which is unseen, that which is yet to come. And in that hope, we can live today in all victory. You have to trust Him on this. Your faith, your hope in God is the most precious and valuable thing to God. What an amazing gift to give God this Christmas. But your faith and hope in Him to truly trust Him. God is not a God who abandoned us in our troubles, but a God who came to rescue us and to save us. Our hope is in a person, Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus, His love for us, His love for you, as then in our reading today, we can praise God, we can rejoice, we can sing, we can celebrate Him every moment, and especially this time of the year, singing in the middle of the storm. Christmas is a very special time of the year. Do not let anything steal that from you. Fix your eyes on your Father in heaven and on what He is doing, His plans, His way. You can trust Him. Christmas is about receiving God's very special gifts. But you have to give Him something too. From our reading this morning, verse 7, we read, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Do you know that you are accepted? Not because of anything you ever did, but because of what Jesus did. You are fully accepted and fully loved, just as you are, because He made you, and He loves you. Have you accepted Him? If you have accepted Him, and you understand that you are fully accepted, then you are to accept others. And this includes forgiving others, as God has forgiven you, fully and freely. You have to trust God in this. It is the only way. If your hands are full of the wrong things, then you cannot take the special gifts that God has for you. And the gift that God has for you today is forgiveness. Are you holding on to something that would prevent you from taking this gift? You are invited this Christmas to Come and see what God has done. What awesome miracle He performs for us. He did something quite incredible at Christmas. And is all this not just stunning? Each week, a layer, a veil, will be removed to reveal this incredible thing that God did over 2,000 years ago for you and for me. That which is hidden is being revealed. Each veil represents things that prevent us from seeing the truth, from seeing clearly the things of God, from receiving fully all the things He has for us. But as God reveals Himself, so there are things that are revealed in our lives that we need to let go in order to see him clearly and to receive him fully. At Christmas, we have the hope of forgiveness, but we have to let go 
of grudges, of bitterness, of guilt, of shame. What are the things you are holding on to? Things that you will have to let go in order to be able to receive what God has for you. Are you holding on to resentment towards others? Bitterness, anger? Are you holding on to your guilt and shame? Because God isn't. He dealt with that on the cross. For him, it is done. It is finished. The work of forgiving you is complete. Then drop everything to grab the fullness of that forgiveness. This is a living hope for right now. Christmas is the hope we all need. Christmas is the hope of forgiveness. Christmas is the hope of love and acceptance. But you will have to let go of fear. Do you fear God? Christmas is the hope of joy. But you will have to let go of pain and sorrow. Christmas is the hope of peace. But you will have to let go of uncertainty, your lack of trust in God. Christmas is the hope of light in the darkness. But you will have to let go of the past. Your hope is in today and in the future. Christmas is the hope of salvation. But you will have to let go of the old self and the old lifestyle. It's when we have this new life and this heart change, living fully forgiven and forgiving others, accepted and accepting, that the world will then know that there is a God who can do the hardest of all things. Change the heart of man and save him from himself at God's own expense. What is it you hope for? You are invited to give Jesus a gift this Christmas, today. You are invited to give him your resentment, your grudges, your anger, your bitterness, your guilt, and your shame. And to take his loving forgiveness. The greatest gift you can give him is your sin. He came to take it. But only if you give it. And he will exchange it for something so beautiful. Your forgiveness. So there are pieces of paper in the pews. You're invited to write down maybe your sin, maybe that which you hold against others. You're invited to then keep that piece of paper. And when you are ready to give those things to God, and receive in exchange the fullness of forgiveness and your freedom in that forgiveness. Then you're asked to simply throw that thing in the bin and be done with it. But please don't steal our pencils. Because then you'd have something else you'd have to write. Do not hide behind a veil any longer. Do not allow anything to obscure your vision of the truth of God. It's all right there for you to see, but only if you are looking. A star appeared in the sky for everyone to see over 2,000 years ago, but who saw it? Only those who were looking for it. Jesus calls you this Christmas to come and see what he has done for you. And now listen to this. May the God of hope, may the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray.
Heavenly Father, mighty God, by your Holy Spirit, would we receive you and all joy and peace. Teach us to trust you fully, knowing that we are fully accepted, that we are to accept others, that we can have the fullness of your forgiveness if we let go of our bitterness, our grudges, our guilt and our shame. It is your joy to take those things and to give us something beautiful in their place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Last week we saw that God promised that the Messiah would come through King David, through the root of Jesse, we are told, who was David's father. He is the hope of the nations. He is your hope. And from our reading today, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles, you will hope. Jesus, the Messiah, was born of David, just like God promised. Jesus came and gave his life for you and for us, that we could receive eternal life. He paid the price for our sin. He said that as far as the east is from the west, that is how far he has removed your sin. You are forgiven. Are you still holding onto it? He invites you to his table to be reminded of what he did for you. His body was broken for you. And his blood was shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. It is done. It is finished. In taking this bread and this cup, you are remembering what Jesus did. You are receiving him into you. You are accepting his sacrifice on your behalf. You are accepting that you are accepted. He invites you to his table. So come with open hands. Drop everything that you've been holding on to. To receive what God has for you. This is the body and blood of Jesus. Do this in remembrance of him. And to receive. With those who are serving. Please come and serve us. Have you accepted your forgiveness? Know that you are at peace with God because He has made His peace with you. Friends, if there's anybody who'd like to stay behind afterwards for prayer, please do so. Please take your pieces of paper and deal with that which God is asking you to deal with that you might let it go to take him in that place. Let us pray. Now unto him, unto him who is able to keep, who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, have a blessed, blessed Christmas.